I am disabled, and my twin is not. My brother just lost his virginity, and I resent him for it. I am 17. Have an identical twin brother. Due to complications at birth, I became disabled in a way that left me with a facial disfigurement, as well as a myriad of other health and behavioral problems. I won't get into details for privacy concerns. I am very close to my brother. We have had a close sibling bond ever since we were children. He has always defended me against bullies, and it at times has felt like he is the only person who treats me like a human. Over the last few years, however, puberty has hit and has changed everything. There has always been things that he could do that I couldn't, of course, but I can't take it anymore. He has gotten handsome, and girls are starting to take notice. He used to be shy and reserved like me, but he's starting to gain confidence. He has lots of friends. I cover for him while he sneaks out to go to parties I'm not able to attend because of various reasons. Last night, he came home grinning. I kept asking him to tell me why he looked so happy. Eventually, I got it out of him that he had gotten a BJ from his crush and maybe more. What is more? It's something I will never, ever know. As he told me, it's like I could see the situation in third person. I was his crippled, useless brother begging him to share just a tiny piece of his life. Right now, I am locked in the bathroom, shaking with anger. This is something nobody can ever understand. If I hadn't have been left with this fucked up, useless body, I would be him. I would look like him. I would have what he has. Every. Single. Day I have to watch the version of me that wasn't left broken and disfigured live the perfect life like something out of a teen movie. He is a living reminder to me that I am not normal. And to make everything worse, the only thing I have ever had against him is that I could beat him at chess. Our dad got us into the game at a young age, and we both played obsessively for a long time. I played in a few tournaments that he didn't qualify for. It meant everything to me. But now, as you can probably guess, he has rapidly caught up to me. This is despite me having all the time in the world to practice as he lives his party animal life. I wish I didn't have a brother. I wish it was him and not me. Update. So this has got a lot more attention than I had imagined it would. I really appreciate everyone who has had kind words and those who have shared their similar experiences. I'm still sitting in the cramped bathroom, feeling the walls pressing against me, even though they're not moving. My head is a mess. I slowly twist the towel in my hands, imagining that this is my whole life. It is as crumpled and mangled as this piece of cloth. Why am I even here? Why am I still listening to him? What can he possibly understand? A few hours ago, we were playing chess together. I tried to concentrate, but I couldn't. His hands moved the pieces quickly, and I... I was stuck. He used to be slower, more attentive. Now he surpasses me even in that. Why is it that everything I do, he can do better? It's not even a question of skill. It's more deeper. My body doesn't obey me anymore. My thoughts are whirling around in my head like a whirlwind. At one moment, I want to scream at him. At another, I want to hide in a corner somewhere and disappear forever. But instead, I sit there, chained to my hatred. I can't hate him. He is my brother. But I hate him. He is my hope for a normal life. And at the same time, a reminder that I will never be like him. After that story with his experience, I can't look him in the eye anymore. He doesn't even realize what he did to me. It's not just about more. It's about everything I will never get. All the opportunities that are gone forever. And even now, when I'm hiding in the bathroom, he's probably there in his room, texting that girl again, planning the next meeting. I slowly get up, looking at my reflection in the mirror. It is alien to me. The face looking back at me is not me. It is some version of me that fell apart on the day I was born. But it is also me. And that's the trouble. I can't stand it anymore. The next morning, my mom called me to the kitchen. I heard a hint of concern in her voice, but I didn't respond immediately. Instead, I scrolled aimlessly through my phone, trying to escape reality. But suddenly her voice became more insistent. I think we should talk, she said when I appeared in the kitchen. She was already sitting at the table, and on the opposite side was my dad. His gloomy look alone made it clear that this conversation did not bode well. What happened? I asked, trying to avoid eye contact. 
Your brother said you've been acting strange lately, she began. We've all noticed that you're not the same as before. Is there anything you want to talk about? Dad sat silently, looking directly at me, his eyes heavy. I felt like they were trying to get to me, but instead I felt the anger coming back, twisting me from the inside. They don't understand anything. No one understands. It's nothing, I grumbled. Your father, and I think you should talk to someone. Maybe a psychologist? You know, it's normal. A lot of people do that to deal with their feelings. My mom tried to sound soft, but it only made me angrier. With their feelings? Do you have any idea what that means? My voice rose, and my dad even leaned forward a little, noticing that I was starting to lose control. That some psychologist can fix all this? I waved my hands, pointing to my body. These are not feelings. This is my life. Silence. Only the sound of the clock on the wall, which became unbearably loud. I saw my mom open her mouth again to say something, but I didn't want to listen anymore. No one can understand how I feel. And you know what? There is no need to try. I live with it every day. You don't understand it. I left the room, leaving them sitting at the kitchen table. But instead of feeling relieved, I felt a wave of emptiness rolling in inside me. I went to my room thinking that this is my life now. And nothing, no one can change how I feel. A few days after the fight with my parents passed in silence. They hardly spoke to me, just watched me from afar. And then my mom said that they had found a psychologist with whom I could talk. Silently, without developing a conflict, I agreed. Maybe it was a way to get out of this endless circle. When I walked into the psychologist's office, a middle-aged woman with warm eyes sat in front of me. She looked calm and reminded me a bit of my childhood grandmother, who always knew how to calm me down. I didn't want anyone to take me apart, but I felt that I just couldn't handle it all on my own anymore. Hello, she began lightly. My name is Alina. You can call me by my first name. I'm here to help you if you want to talk. I nodded silently and sat down on the chair in front of her. I realize that it must be difficult for you to open up, but I want you to know that everything we discuss here will remain between us. We started with a few general topics, but I felt that she was trying to gradually lead me to something deeper. And then she said, I think you feel very lonely because of your situation, but that doesn't mean you don't have friends or people you can talk to. Does it? This question hit me. She knew something I didn't want to touch. I nervously crumpled the corner of my t-shirt in my hands. Do you talk to anyone on the internet? Maybe there's someone you share your thoughts with? Here I couldn't keep it in any longer. It was as if someone opened a floodgate and the words flowed out by themselves. There's this girl. I don't know what to do about it, I said, lowering my head. She doesn't know who I really am. I haven't shown her any pictures of me, well, real ones. Is it hard for you to trust her? Alina looked at me as if she already knew the answer. Yes, I sighed. I don't know what will happen when she finds out. I'm scared. I pulled out my phone and started to show her the correspondence. I scrolled through my phone screen, remembering all our conversations. Her name is Lyra, and we met by chance in one of the chats about books. She was so interesting, and I immediately noticed that she listened to me very carefully, even though I was saying a lot of abstract things. What do you think about this novel? I think the author is trying to show how we all feel trapped, even if everything looks normal on the outside. She said, you're probably right. We often don't show what's going on inside, but you know, sometimes it's hard to open up to others. That's true. Do you feel like you can't be yourself with people? I stopped then, trying not to give myself away, but at the same time, I didn't want to lie. Sometimes, I'm afraid that if they see the real me, they won't like it. I don't think that appearance is important. The main thing is what you are like inside. People see more than just what's on the surface. Then I felt like I wanted to tell her more. But I couldn't. What if she really saw me and everything changed? Alina listened attentively and looked at the correspondence. She seemed to realize how important it was to me. What do you think would happen if you showed her yourself? She asked me calmly. I don't know. I answered. Maybe she would disappear like everyone else. Are you afraid she wouldn't accept you? I nodded. But she already knows you from the inside, Alina continued. She already sees your character, your thoughts, your inner world. 
Maybe that's the most important thing, isn't it? These words stuck with me, making me think. I began to realize that the problem was not that Lyra might not accept me. I didn't accept myself, and that was the most frightening thing. I returned home after the session with Elena. Subconsciously, I expected my parents to ask how everything went, but luckily, no one was waiting for me in the kitchen. I sighed in relief as I walked into my room. As he approached the door, he heard laughter from the neighboring room, the brother's room. Okay, I always called him bro in my head, even though we were the same age. It's just that he was taller, more confident, more successful. It became a habit that only deepened my complex. I came closer to the door, listened. He was talking to someone on the phone. It was his girlfriend. I automatically clenched my fists as I felt a familiar pounding in my chest. I returned to my room, threw my backpack on the floor, and fell on the bed, pulling out my phone. I opened our correspondence with Lyra. I. How was your day? Maybe we'll meet somewhere? Well, not really, but let's at least chat live. I knew I couldn't ask her out like my brother does with his girlfriend. I was stuck in this virtual world where no one could see my face, and it felt both comfortable and creepy at the same time. The answer came in a few seconds. Lyra. Oh, I would be happy. But today I am busy helping my parents. Maybe tomorrow? Tomorrow. Somehow this word always hurt. Like putting real life on hold until later, where I'll never be sure if that later will happen. Suddenly the door of my room opened. The brother was standing in the doorway, holding a chessboard in his hands. Maybe a party? He asked, tilting his head. I just looked at him without answering. He always is after receiving something new in life. The first party, the first kissing story, the first sex. He comes to me with the offer to do the old things, as if that would balance something out. You're texting her again, aren't you? He hinted at my phone. I looked up at him in confusion. How does he know that? I'm not blind. You're always glued to your phone when we're not playing chess or trying to talk about something important. Who is she? He sat down on the bed next to him. My heart trembled. It was a subject I never wanted to discuss with him. He knows too much about what real life is like. I'm just an observer. It's not important, I answered shortly. It's important, he emphasized. If you're really worried about her, you should talk about it. I laughed, but it was a bitter laugh. Yeah, I'll tell the girl that I'm a deformed, disabled person, and we'll see if she'll be happy to talk further. There was a challenge in my words. My brother looked at me, then turned away. You know, it's not what you think. His voice suddenly became quieter. You are not the only one who is afraid, and not all things are as simple as they seem. I narrowed my eyes at him. He? Are you afraid? Anyone but him. You know, I'm also afraid that I'll lose those who are important to me. He continued, thoughtfully arranging the chess pieces on the board. Sometimes I'm not sure if they're with me, because of who I am, or because of how I look. We all have our fears. His words were new to me. In my world, he was always the center of attention, and everyone else was just a shadow. But perhaps he too had his doubts. How do you do it? I asked suddenly, unable to control myself. How do you always find a common language with everyone? How is it so easy for you? He stopped, looked at me with a kind of bitter smile. You think it's easy, but it's not. I too worry like you, especially now. But you don't know one thing? I met a girl, also on the internet. I froze, not believing my ears. What? I looked at him in disbelief. Yes, she is cool, we talk a lot. But there is a problem. I don't know what to say to her when we meet. I'm afraid she's waiting for something else, and I, maybe I'm not the one she needs. It was a blow to the breath. My perfect brother, who has everything, suddenly feels the same way I do. We were both caught up in our fears and insecurities. Maybe our lives are not as different as it seemed to me all these years. And you don't know how to tell her about it? I finally asked, not daring to believe it. No, he admitted. I'm afraid that she will be disappointed. We're both trying to figure out what it's going to be like, but I feel like I might lose it before it even starts. Suddenly, I felt that we were much closer than ever before. We were both trapped by our own fears, even though our paths seemed so different. We sat down, each in front of his side of the chessboard. But this time, it was no longer a competition. We were equal. 
at least in our fear of reality. The meeting with Lyra was scheduled for Saturday in a small cafe in the city center. I was more worried than ever. My heart was pounding so hard it felt like it was going to burst out of my chest. In front of the mirror, I checked every centimeter of my face, although I knew it was useless. The mask does not fit me, and I could no longer hide my face. After talking with my brother and a psychologist, I realized that I could no longer run away from reality. My brother drove me to the cafe, sitting silently behind the wheel. He knew what this meeting meant to me and must have felt the same fear. But before I got out of the car, he suddenly put his hand on my shoulder. You'll be fine, he said quietly. I know that you are afraid, but you are better than you think. I just nodded, speechless. After so many years of rivalry and tension between us, he finally showed that he believed in me. When I walked into the cafe, everyone seemed to be staring at me. But I already knew it was just my imagination. Lyra was sitting at a table in the corner, bent over a book. She looked exactly like her avatar, short, with short dark hair and a slightly shy smile. I came up and said, hello. She looked up and smiled, but there was a special softness in her eyes that I didn't expect, as if she already knew something important, but didn't want to say it right away. Hello, she answered quietly. Glad to see you. We started talking, and at first everything went well. I tried not to think about my fears, even though my hands were shaking a little. Lyra was very friendly. We relaxed, discussed the books we were reading and general topics, but I constantly felt the burden of telling her about myself. I didn't want this meeting to be based on lies. Listen, I finally couldn't stand it and spoke. I have to tell you something. She looked at me, and her smile faded a little as if she too was preparing for an important conversation. I, I don't look like you probably imagine. I'm disabled, I have problems with my face, and it's not what you expected. I looked down, ready for rejection, or even for her to just walk away. But she was silent, and after a few seconds, her voice spoke calmly, almost quietly. I also have something to tell you. I looked up at her, not understanding what she meant. She slowly raised one hand to the table and showed me her card under the table, which I didn't even notice. It was a wheelchair. My eyes widened in shock. I'm disabled too, said Lyra, with a slight smile on her face. I've been paralyzed since childhood. This is something that I did not show in my photos. I was afraid you wouldn't want to date me after you found out. My head was spinning. Everything I had been afraid to say for so long suddenly lost its meaning. She was the same as me. All this time, we both lived with our fears. We hid something from the world and from each other. But fate decided to give us a chance. Are you serious? I finally asked, hardly believing it. Yes, she nodded, smiling again. And you see, that doesn't change what we were talking about before, does it? We both laughed, and I felt a huge weight lift off my shoulders. It was a moment of relief. A moment when all my fears, all my doubts disappeared, she accepted me as I was, because she herself knew what it was like to be different. We sat for a long time and talked, laughed, discussed books and dreams, not paying attention to our physical limitations. And now I knew that this is not an obstacle, but what unites us makes our love stronger. A few months later, Lyra and I became even closer. From the day we met, I was no longer afraid to show myself as I am. My face was no longer the shadow of my fear. Lyra helped me accept myself as I helped her. I came home from another meeting with her and saw my brother sitting in the living room and looking at me with a slight smile. How did it go? He asked, but there was already understanding in his eyes. You can't even imagine, I answered, sitting down next to him. She is also disabled. He was surprised but did not object. He simply nodded. This is fate, right? He said thoughtfully. Yes. Fate has a strange way of showing us that we are not alone, I replied. And this is how I understood. Life will always find a way to give us love, even if there are obstacles on the way. Sometimes this love comes unexpectedly when you are ready to give up. But it is worth opening up, and you will find someone who will accept you as you are. Why am I telling you this? 
This is my story about how true love overcomes all obstacles, even those that seem insurmountable. Coincidence and fate lead two people who perceive themselves through shared experience to true acceptance and happiness.